Whoa. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Nice to have you here. We are recording, so we are going. Welcome to Contemporary Issues class. Zoomers, can you hear us okay? Susan? Good. Thank you. I'd like to check because you never know about the technology. And uh, we are pleased to have Rev. Thorne Boyd with us today to talk about uh, group life. And there were lots going on in the church, and so we are looking forward to that. She's going to tell us what's going on, and ask, we will ask questions and see what's going on here. And what you think about groups elsewhere, too? Are you involved in Rotary or other things? And do millennials join groups today? And why aren't they joining? And what makes a successful small group? And what doesn't? All good questions. Good things. So, so let's talk about that today. Before we get started, our usual announcements. Uh, Zoomers, please mute yourself in the lower left corner of your screen so we keep the background noise down. We are recording this for future playback. And uh, please share your comments today. Uh, do you want to take questions while you're talking or do you want to wait till after? It doesn't matter. Okay, good. We'll just be informal. And so please share your thoughts, but don't dominate if anybody. <laughs> once in a while we have folks that we say get so worked up on our issues that they like to continually ask questions and comments. So we just ask, keep in mind, let everybody comment. Um, any other announcements? Vicki, my wife Vicki would like to share something. Um, I'm attempting to make a list of all of our addresses. We have everybody's emails, but we don't have addresses. And so addresses, addresses, however you say it. Physical, yeah, physical addresses, please. So I'm going to send this around. If you're on it, check it. And if it's not right, mark it off and add it to the bottom. If it's all right, just delete it. Um, and if you're not on it and you want to be on it, please add it. Um, I also have two cards that I'm sending around. One is for Helen, who is here, but that's all right. I'm going to have you sign it, and then we'll let her take it home. The other is for Marilyn Gary, who is in the hospital with a bleeding ulcer, and um, uh, they're still running a lot of tests on her, but I've been in contact with Joe, and so she's kind of holding her own. So if you'll sign that, um, I will get those mailed out to them. So thank you. Okay. And might I say something starting sure. this class? Uh, I knew the subject and I'm active in A Connect. And uh, Rev. Lauren and Rev. Jerry did a memorial service for my husband yesterday. That was fantastic. Aww. It was fantastic. My husband wore uh, plaid flannel shirts every day practically since he retired he retired at 55 at the same time we became grandparents and his whole life turned to the kids and the grandchildren well anyway yesterday it was such a wonderful gathering and it is truly the first day i have felt joy mm. so, oh, no. but anyway on when i found out the subject and rev lauren's going to be here I got to thinking about the people that were there yesterday. Everyone in that chapel and in the gathering space reception, they were in some group in our life, mm -hmm. small group, mm -hmm. and some were at church. We both, we were in a, he was in a retiree's golf league. I was in a ladies, our aunt, a ladies golf league. Uh, our neighborhood group, they were there. Uh, I mean, everything in our life, everything there was important because it was a group. And you know, he retired after 30 years with General Motors Acceptance Corporation. And he and several retired folks had moved back to Colorado to retire. And it just happened to be lucky for us. This is where we lived when he had sufficient numbers to retire. And I sent that they would have lunch together. They, they're former control branch managers from all over the country, but sometime they were in Colorado. This is where they retired. I sent a group email to them, and six of the eight were there. And one came from North Dakota, the most terrific guy. And I didn't know he was going to be there. I had actually reserved seats for these are a group of people that 
their lives had gone in different directions and so forth, but they had that in common. They were General Motors and DW had retired with them. That was this little group that was there. It was wonderful. Anyway, this I, I'm looking forward to your class because small groups are important. They last your whole life. <clears throat> Okay, Steve. Good. Sure, John. Yeah, please. Uh, I suggest we open the doors. Oh, oh, okay. Oh, okay. Would that be okay with everyone? Mm -hmm. So anybody can come in? Well, can we just the circulation. Oh, yeah. 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 If you heard, if you heard Rev. Mark's sermon, we're all breathing each other's breath. <laughs> 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 Apparently, dinosaurs. All right. Anyone who's ever lived. That's, that's right. right. I turned okay. the hair thing on. Okay. Sure. Yes. Thanks, John. We appreciate yeah. it. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to share a screen here. Um, the web, web page from St. Andrew that starts with a group life description. Uh, but I want to introduce also Rev. Lauren in case anyone doesn't know Rev. Lauren. He's been with us for a year and a half or a couple of years now and from Florida originally. And she's been in theater, which is probably great training for the ministry, I would think. And college at Drake. Duke. Duke. Okay. Duke. 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 Yeah. Watch it. We be we oh, stopped yes, we UNC yesterday. Oh, so good. <laughs> I'm not competitive though. I just uh, 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 no, not at all. Yeah. And so yeah. Just want to do yeah, quick introduction and uh, Tell us about what's going on in the church groups. So if you have seen this, we um, we have a flyer that Rachel um, Cooper did for us. It's at Cafe Connect as well as near the, the bathrooms at the, the front of the church. Um, it has really general names for groups like Wednesday men's group, you know, Tuesday, because as, as wonderful as, you know, women's spiritual group versus women's theological group versus women's something something group people don't under you know they don't know the difference so it, i had just had to have it spread out into the dates and the times for people and um kind of age group or specific thing that they're talking about a lot of co-ed groups that that many of you are involved in so um so that's on there to get people started talking there are groups that some of you are in or that we have a lot of them that are closed. People are, you know, men, there are a lot more men's groups than three, but those groups reach their max. And um, as um, there's a, a sheet in front of me about John Wesley, um, the bands, you know, there's the classes and the bands and the Sunday school classes and um, the different sizes of groups. So you have a group this size, then you may have a group of, of 15 that, that meet and, and do something together. And then you may have a group of like six where you're telling your deepest, darkest secrets or issues to. And, and those are all important in your lives, in our lives. And that really small group, um, having people come in and out of that doesn't really work well. So we have a lot more groups than this, but they're just they're full and they're connecting in that really deep way as, as Helen was talking about, um, you know, some of them are that way. So there are more. And that's what's so interesting is I was um, two years ago about today, um, I met with, with Rev Mark and he said, you know, met him at a coffee shop and he said, okay, here's the deal. You know, we, we have this vision statement and we have a position for a direct a pastor of discipleship, but I have someone in mind for that. I really think that you would work well for this new position, pastor of group life. He explained about the, the vision for the church and to, to eradicate social isolation and disconnection. And this is one of the very best ways to do that. Um, I was talking with Ken Couch today. He didn't come to the men's breakfast yesterday. He said he got so many phone calls. Are you okay? Where are you? You're always here. The door's open. You're here. What's wrong? You want that. You want that connection. You want someone to miss you when you're not here. Um, I also ran into somebody in the sanctuary who said, I haven't seen you. There's someone I haven't seen, but I... Um, I don't know if maybe she's watching online. I said, please call her. You know, there, there are a few of us on staff, but there are lots of you who have connections. Call the people who are missing and make sure that they're either 
you know, watching online and you're connecting with them or, um, or maybe there's some reason why they can't connect with us. So, um, so then COVID hit um, and Jerry and I started July of 2020. Met none of you, <laughs> met no one. Um, and, you know, for a year sat in a place where, um, you know, it, it was just different. It was a cool opportunity to look at other things. So I looked at what groups do we already have, you know, um, starting this whole group life ministry sounds like a really great, neat thing. I don't know people, so that makes it difficult. But secondly, what do we actually have going? You know, it's one of those things where we unintentionally slight people like an entire United Methodist women's ministry that's been happening for, you know, 200 years, um, and, and um, or men's ministry, or sages that has hundreds. I mean, when I send out that email, it goes to like 800 people, and, and none of the addresses bounce back. It's not like, you know, it's pretty amazing. So these groups, um, whether they're small or large, really matter. And um, it wasn't a, an intentional, an intentional slight by the church to say that, you know, those don't matter, but they were looking at small groups and really connecting to people and what that means. And so it was, it was an interesting process to go through and I kind of felt like an, um, like whether it's an explorer or, a, you know, a, um, what do you call it? I had a, I have a concussion, so I um, I know it's a long story, um, and I I can't I have some word finding issues. So um, when you dig for things, what is Archaeologist? that? Archaeologist. Thank you. Uh -huh. Yes. <laughs> Sounds like one Sounds word. Like yeah. <laughs> um, I, I kind of feel like an archaeologist too. Um, okay, what was here? What do we still have? What still works? Um, what are we missing? And what I found was just by talking with several of you and finding out what groups are already here and available, you know, the Monday women's um, book group, you know, that's open and that's a group people can join. And so um, finding out about that, I then, um, I'll tell you a little bit about something else I do as a part of my job. Um, Redmark talks about the, the pastors having the big three. So what are the big three, three things we're focusing on? And mine's group life, entry, the entry into the church, getting connected and worship, whether that be um, helping craft worship, even song when we were, were doing that, which is paused right now. But that piece of bringing people into the church, I meet them for coffee or lunch if they wanna meet um, and, and learn about them and then say, hey, you know, it'd be really great if I can connect you with, with joy and what, what, you know, what Sages is doing or the, the Monday group, okay, you're, you really want to be a part of a women's group on a Monday, okay, there's this, and I'll tell, you know, you guys have gotten emails from me that have said, like, please connect with these people, so it's really cool to connect them what we already had, and then it was finding what we were missing and not creating things we didn't need. Mm -hmm. You know, the answer about the millennials, um, you know, that I don't think the average millennials are now early 30s, which is shocking. Um, I babysat them all I'm like, why are you 32 or whatever? But um, <laughs> it is, isn't it? So, you know, they are, for the most part, if they don't have children, they're, they're connecting at, at yoga and at coffee shops and, and, um, in, with social issues, you know, they're, they're marching downtown, they're doing that, they're, they're connecting with groups, just not in churches, and when they get married, and they start to have kids, if they have a connection to God through church, then they come back, and then it's really, how do we support you as a young parent, and we have MOPS, which is a group for, for preschool moms, um, and, um, and, and younger children. And we have a family connections group, which we switched your classrooms because this group is so big. Um, they have very, very few that come because they're just trying to make life happen. Yes. But we're saying we're holding a place for you. And so there's a, every other week, there's a class in there of, of folks. They're connecting on 
on social media, they're meeting for play dates with their children. And so it is happening. It just doesn't look like it when you look across the room and see, you know, that there are just a few people in there. Um, so we don't want to over-program for them and then have them not come. Then we have the, you know, the early millennials, almost Gen Z of, of 20-somethings, college age, you know, and either they're devout and more conservative kind of campus crusade kind of thing, or they're really, uh, and they wouldn't come here if that were the case, or, you know, we've given them a really good foundation and they get to college and they're having a great time or they're exploring or they're, you know, we're like Helen's grandchildren, you know, a, a grandparent passes away. There are lots of things that happen when you're in college. And so they're going to come back to us later. We put those seeds in, you know, so we have a few 20 somethings and, and we've, we've attempted putting some groups together for them and, um, and it just hasn't taken off the way we'd like. So Rev Mark is doing this. I don't know if you guys have heard about it. I'm so jealous. I'm like, why am I not in 22? Yeah, I get to go walk yes. with him on the, you know, on the um, El, Cam El Camino. 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 The El Camino is a car. <laughs> we would have an El Camino now. Is he getting um, feedback? I mean, is he getting? He has a yeah. I think he has a good group of folks, and so that has ended up going through our wellness initiative. Mm -hmm. Good. If, if it's not full, it's post to full. I yes, think. I, I think you're right. I think you're right. Um, so, so there is a way of small group. Um, so we have a few new groups that are starting, and I want to tell you about those. And um, and also, um, oh, he's not here. Um, we have a new visitor, um, Eric Schmidt, who was here a few weeks ago. If y'all have met him. He um, is a retired, he just retired as a science teacher from Rock Canyon, I think is the name of the school. Um, he was in the Navy, I think he was in the Navy um, before that. Anyway, he's a really neat guy. And he, he, he has really, really interesting. He has um, um, kids around the country, around the world, you know, when you, you sign up to sponsor a child, well, he goes and visits them. Wow. in the Philippines, wow. in Nicaragua, wow. in Colombia. And so he has all these incredible relationships. So he's really interested in, 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 in some adult mission trips. And I've talked about how can we partner with Jamie, who is so busy with domestic stuff that's happening. How can we part? Yes. How can we partner with Jamie, our outreach director, to do maybe a small group that's going to Guatemala or a small group that that's going to Haiti. And I, you know, we talk all about Haiti, the language, the what happened there, all, you know, the political situation. We go, we come back and you're a small group that is connected through that, you know? So there are lots of cool ways to, to do these small groups. So I'm excited about that. Um, the Thursday night dinner group is starting this week. Um, it has come out of the even song small group. So even song has met for several years, then they went online during COVID and they met on, on Saturday nights for worship, but on Thursday nights they did a, you know, read a book and talk about it. Um, we continue doing, when we came back in person, doing a dinner once a month at a restaurant on the second Thursday of the month. And so this is um, kind of a continuation of that as we put even song on pause. When we came back in person, it was really small numbers for like six staff in the building and 13 people in worship or something. So it, 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 it didn't come back with the fervor, further, the fervor that other services have. And then Omicron kind of, we were like, okay, we, we need to just pause this for a while and, and, and we'll come back to it. But in the meantime, we wanted to keep those folks who are interested in being, who maybe aren't connected in other ways, connected but also open it up to folks who are interested in becoming a part of, of a group. So it's Thursday night, it's, it's men and women and teenagers, whoever they wanna bring for, for dinner on, Thursday, on one Thursday a month, and then also read a book and more like a book, um, a book group where you read the book and then you talk about it, not each chapter, yay, yeah. yeah, that sort of thing, yeah. So, um, so the book, this month is um, is a Henry Nowen book, small book called A Life of the Beloved. 
and we'll, we'll talk about that at the end of the month. And so we'll do that. Jason Snow is, um, is co-leading that with me. And, um, and so that starts this Thursday. We're going to meet at Mod Pizza just over here by, um, by King Supers. So there's that group. Then there's a singles group that, um, that Jim Holmes has started. And what he's doing is he wants it to be intergenerational. Um, I don't think that will end up happening, but we're gonna we're gonna let, let we're gonna see what happens. Um, and it may then be that kind of people parcel off and say, well, you know, I'm a divorced Gen Xer and I'm gonna go do this or I'm a this or that. So um, he's gathering names. So they get sent to us and get gathered. And then he's going to get that group together to say, what do you want to do? How do you want to be? How does this work? Do we, are we just each other's plus one to, you know, work events or, or are we, you know, going out and doing stuff together? What does that look like? So, um, so that's a group that, um, yes. Can I give one comment on that? I'm Jenny Axon. Yes. Some of you who have not, I don't know, or haven't been around a lot of lately. Steve Axon and I met at the singles group in Church of the Resurrection oh, over wow. 20 years ago. Neither of us had been dating or anything. He was recently divorced. I've been 10 years between marriages. First night we met, we went out for coffee at the huge Church of Resurrection singles group. I mean, it was a big deal. And it was, we, both of us had just decided to go do a singles group once, you know, just to see what would happen. And we met and we knew people in the outdoor club in Kansas City. We were canoeists and outdoor enthusiasts. Oh, wow. We hit it off immediately, dated a couple of years, took a couple of years off, and here we are married almost 20 years. Oh, wow. And that was the single group <clears throat> at the Methodist Church of the Resurrection because we were both tired of seeing people that weren't like-minded or didn't have values that we were appreciating. We thought, let's go try a church. Yeah, that's fantastic, <laughs> Jenny. It, it, it's a, a, a good testament to it, to it working well. Um, I'm so thankful that I, it was in a relationship and married long before eHarmony or an online dating ever came on the scene. Um, I'm so thankful. Um, couple that's not here today but new to our class that met on eHarmony mm -hmm. and they shared that with us yeah it's so, amazing yeah, yeah. It, it works so there are other ways now which is which is a problem we find in the church is that people can connect to each other small group wise dating wise all the things other places you know the church used to be the only place where you served the poor you know now there's so many you know, um, nonprofits that do that, that you don't have to come to the church to do that, you know. But, but we do need to do that. It's a, I think we have a responsibility to, to people to do that. Yes, I agree. I agree with you. Um, so the, the third group and really third section is um, social justice and social holiness. In the United Methodist Church, you have personal holiness, personal piety, you know, that everything you're working on for you um, to make you more like Jesus. And we know we never get there, but it's that path, that, that, that journey of the more we fall in love with God, the more we want to be like God, the more we want to be like Jesus, more loving, more forgiving, all of those things. And so on that path, that, pardon? Pardon? Anybody on Zoom have a comment? That's okay. All right. We're going. All right. Um, I was like, amen. Yes. <laughs> um, sanctification. Holy sanctification. Yeah. If you do on Zoom have a comment, please just chime in. Yeah, there you go. Um, so there's the, the personal piece of that. And so many churches focus on that personal piece. And when you listen to like Christian music on the radio, Caleb, that sort of thing, it's all this way. It's all about my relationship with Jesus, my relationship with God, if that's all it is. Um, but when you read the New Testament, Jesus, Paul, it's all over the Old Testament, is all about this. 
stretching out and being with others and taking care of each other. That's that's such a huge part. This is important too, but that is so important. And so I, I um, I just. <laughs> 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 So I asked Keith to read something um, from the United Methodist Church for us about social holiness and social justice, and then I'll, I'll, I'll tie us in. So you're going to talk about the group reform? I am, but I want you to read that first. Okay. No Holiness, but Social Holiness by Steve Lanskar. The general rule of discipleship, and they define that to be to witness to Jesus Christ in the world and to follow his teachings through acts of compassion justice, worship, and devotion under the guidance of the Holy Spirit. So that general rule of discipleship shapes the life and work of co covenant discipleship groups, class leaders, and the congregation. It helps them live as witnesses to Jesus Christ in the world as they follow his teachings summarized by him in Matthew 22, 37 to 40. And that is, you shall love the Lord your God with us. You've seen this before on the wall of our sanctuary. Right. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. That is the greatest and first commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and, and the prophets. Jesus said to his disciples, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. All of them. No, John 14, 15. And you are my friends if you do what I command you. John 15, 14. The Christian life is shaped by obedience to Jesus' teachings. In the baptismal covenant, you promise to confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in his grace, and promise to serve him as your Lord in union with the church. The congregation, in turn, promises to proclaim the good news and live according to the example of Christ to surround you with a community of love and forgiveness, that you may grow in your trust of God and be found faithful in your service to others, to pray for you, that you may be a true disciple who walks in the way that leads to life. Living the baptismal covenant is how two Christians obey Jesus' new commandment. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. John 13, 34, 35. When Christians watch over one another in love and help each other to grow in holiness of heart and life, they keep this new commandment. Congregations keep Jesus' new commandment when they intentionally develop a path to discipleship that meets people where they are and provides guides along the way in the form of small groups, and the guidance of seasoned disciples. This is why John Wesley meant what John Wesley meant when he wrote, solitary religion is not to be found there. Holy solitaries is a phrase no more consistent with the gospel than holy adulterers. The gospel of Christ knows of no religion but social, no holiness but social holiness. Faith working by love is the length and breadth and depth and height of Christian perfection. The general rule of discipleship is a practical guide for Christians to love God and neighbor together. It makes social holiness possible in that it helps Christians to center their life together in Jesus Christ. The rule points Christians and the congregation towards the risen Christ. It leads them to join in what he is up to in the world. Holiness is social because God is social. And we breathe all it is. We, we breathe molecules from Jesus' last breath. Did you get that? Did you get that in the sermon? There's that molecule. That's right. God is social. He created human beings in his image to be relational creatures. We become fully human when we share in the relationships God initiates with us through the people he places in our way. The people he places in our way. I love that. Social holiness is the practice of obeying Jesus' commandments to love God with all your heart, soul, and mind, loving your neighbor as yourself, and loving one another, loving one another, one another. I think that's just fellow members of your local congregation as Christ loves. When Wesley says that holiness is social, 
He means that the depth of your love for God is revealed by the way you love whom God loves. The writer of 1 John describes the social nature of holiness. We love because he first loved us. Those who say, I love God and hate their brothers and sisters are liars. For those who do not love a brother or sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. The commandment we have from him is this. Those who love God must love their brothers and sisters also. 1 John 4, 19 to 21. If you truly love God, then you must love your brother and sister in Christ and your neighbor. This requires you to be in relationships with the people of God, with the people God places alongside of you in church and the people of your neighborhood, city, and the world. You need community, what Wesley calls society, for grace to nurture you into the person God created you to be. The baptismal covenant describes the relationship between God baptized and the church the general rule of discipleship being, provides the means for living the covenant and becoming agents of social holiness thank you awesome. so having um, heard that without taking care of neighbors it means nothing it means nothing so um so we have a few new groups. We have a group that we've had for about a year that was called Creating Common Humanity. And we're changing that name to Social Justice Group that, um, that Keith is leading, that Mary Sue is a part of, um, a, that works with both interfaith connections in our community, as well as anti-racism work. And they can talk more about that in a minute, but that, um, those are our neighbors, you know, and we are in a place of privilege in a good way, a place of privilege where we get to affect change and be the, the, the mouthpiece for people who don't have a voice. Now we need to listen to them for what to say um, and not just say what we think is important. But, um, but that is a group that has been ongoing. It continues to, to find its right place. I know, Jenny, you were a part of, of kind of the creation of some of that, right? Um, for those of you that were part of any of the interfaith alliance of Colorado work, we started working with them in 2017. And we quickly became a huge integral part of their progressive congregational network, which is, you know, 35, 40 churches all over Colorado. Annie at the time was overseeing that. And I think Carrie Horst and I attended the first meetings with Interfaith Alliance when they began the Progressive Congregational Network with Annie. <laughs> and we worked with them for five years. And recently Keith came to me this year and said, we need to start this up again. <laughs> He said, I, I said, I can't lead it right now. I can't lead it right now. And it did grow to how many people on earth? I think there's 175 people on this list. So that's a very, like you're saying, a large group, very flexibly oriented. Many people do different things. We did the year at the legislature, we did the day at the legislature every year where we took a group down to meet our legislators and talk at the Capitol about the important social justice things that were coming through. And it's a very deep body of work. So I am thrilled that Mary Sue and Keith are stepping forward with you, Lauren, to launch this again. And I promise that whenever I can be part, I will jump right back in joyfully, do things with you, but I am just thrilled. We have a long history. And St. Andrew was a leader in the Progressive Congregation Network, helping other churches in the Denver area to get more involved. Yeah, so it's it's interfaith work. It's interfaith is doing a lot of, you know, a lot of different work with like um, Pete has mentioned before the anti-racism, as well as other things, housing uh, for the poor, like all these different pieces that, that fall under their, their heading. Um, we, 
there's a group that's starting. It's not under group life per se, but um, but is um, around climate change and environmental issues. And they're going to do um, they kind of review the whole church building and, and have someone look at that and see what we need to do um, to make it more environmentally friendly. Um, I assume that they'll give us some great ideas just as people in our own homes. You know, there are now bags that you can, you know, if we just went back to the, you know, to the 50s when we had glass containers and, you know, you reused a glass container or you, you know, something came and you, you put it in your Tupperware and reuse those things, we could, we could get rid of so much of the plastic that was so became so convenient that now it's filling landfills. So I hope that there'll be a lot of good things, but if you're interested in joining that group, let me know and I'll send you to the right people. Um, we're also starting a group called, um, Sorry, what, is that one called? Pardon? what is that one called? Um, I think it's called climate change group. I, I um, Lana's leading it because it has so much to do with the trustees, um, but it's, but yeah, but basically an environmental group. Um, and Burn. Then, uh, yes. The history of that of that group was um, Earth. It was called Earth Justice uh, or Earth Ministry, and uh, there's an awful lot of material that is available. Uh, I uh, Cynthia Reiner's told me that it was restarting, uh, but so far nobody is has inquired as to what the history and what, what our previous thrusts were, all the materials that we had available or anything like that. Um, and so I was kind of, uh, I've been kind of waiting to hear what was going on with that group. Yeah, I uh, if I were you, I would email Lana and let her know that that you, you know, helped, that you spearheaded that before and, and how, you know, that you would ha be happy to, to kind of fill her in because that's, she's really leading that with Kathy Kilmer. Okay, so, can I ask a couple other questions? Yes. Habitat for Humanity used to be a very large thrust at St. Andrew. As a matter of fact, the reason that Pat and I attend the church is because of our involvement with Habitat and the fact that St. Andrew used to build a house every year uh, and have between, you know, have volunteers out there uh, four days or three days a week, uh, you know, 10 to 15 volunteers, uh, three to four days a week uh, for all the time of the construction and everything and contribute as much as 50 to $75,000 every year. It was a very large thrust and all of a sudden, I don't hear anything about it anymore. Uh, and um, so I, I was wondering about that. And then the other one that I have not heard anything about is uh, the Second Chance Center. Second Chance Center was largely started by people at, at St. Andrew. Um, uh, Mick Kingston was the first chairman of the board and was instrumental in getting the whole thing uh, legally organized. Um, and we have had many, many speakers from, from Second Chance Center. Second Chance Center has, has uh, really uh, established a, a strong foothold and, uh, but still needs a lot, of, a lot of people to be involved in the thing. And I haven't heard anything about it in, in probably two or three years. Um, yes. Would those fall under outreach instead they, of group life? They do actually all, um, you know, the green ministry doesn't and definitely I'm going to look. I there. thought you were because, talking about social justice. Yes, I, I am. Um, but have, so Habitat, I mean, everything we do here is evangelism. Everything we do here is, is, um, should be social holiness. Everything we do here is worship. Every you know, so it it definitely bleeds into each other. Um, but I would if I would love for you to contact Lana about the Green Ministry and and um, and talk with her about that, Jim. Um, as far as Habitat, that absolutely falls under under outreach. And um, what I've what I've been told is there are just other focuses right now, and that required a lot of money, but not so much hands on. And we wanted to do more hands on, but I could be wrong in that, so don't quote me. Lauren, um, I, yes, can I comment to Jim one thing. Sure. Thank you for all your earlier ministry, Jim. Yes. We miss you, 
And I, uh, when I started working with Interfaith, Jim and Pat jumped right in and took me out to coffee for a two hour coffee awesome. to learn the history of all of the groups that we now work with during Big Sur. Nice. And then they were extremely big part of the Big Sur launch also, mm -hmm. as several other people in here were. So there's so much, it's a giant church. Yeah. And it's, there's so much history that every time we bring in new uh, members or new leaders and we look at who has left, you all know Judy Campbell very well. Mm -hmm. And you know the leadership she did big on, on Big Sur. Mm -hmm. And Stephanie Mullen, and Vicki Basket and I launched Big Sur. How many years ago, Vicki? Nine million hours at the kitchen table <laughs> with wonderful people like Jim and Pat and Carrie. Uh, and I'm not going to try to name everybody, but it grew and grew and grew. And well, it's another yeah. huge ministry that yeah, involves. Sp yeah, speaking of Big Sur, so I've only been here a year and a half, but. Um, but Jim, I've met folks from Second Chance who were here, who actually came to the building. They've done a discipleship moment um, about it. We they big served this last year, even during COVID. People went there and helped out. And some young man in a red truck drove by and helped pull out a. Do you guys remember that discipleship moment? Help pull out a. a uh, a big bush or something so we're definitely still involved with them I, I think on the website and you can pull it up but it it talks about there are like five or eight or something things that we really connect with right now in outreach and I believe that second chance is one of them and so I've heard about it publicly um, in the last year and a half that I've been here but that certainly is something that is a part of of social holiness social justice could be a piece, Keith, of, of one of the many yeah. things that you look at is, is that integrate reintegration after being in prison, if you don't know what Second Chance Center is. Mm -hmm. So this Gun Sense group um, is, is being started by Kathy Kilmer and Laura Reeves. And um, one of the things that we talked about when we first met a few weeks ago was that the Interfaith Alliance you know, has so many things on their docket and they know there are certain groups that, that you know, legislatively are already doing stuff. So they are not doing gun sense work, not because it's not important, but because they are do, working on other things. So, um, so we are working with um, Colorado Faith Communities United to End Gun Violence, it's CFCU and Moms Demand Action for Gun Sense, which I have been a part of for several years. It's, it's about our kids not shooting one another. It's about guns being locked away safely. It's about education. Um, it's about um, that there are you know, lots of statistics out there about if someone is, is contemplating dying by suicide, they have a specific method and they will not go outside of that if they can't, you know, if they can't get a hold of pills and that's the way they want to, to, um, to end their life, then they won't do it. They will wait till they find those pills. Um, my mother took Chantex um, to stop smoking and it makes, it can make you suicidal. Doesn't for everybody, but it did to her. Um, she was this beautiful, beautiful woman named Texan who was the deputy chief of staff for a senator. She was not going to hurt this. So there was not going to be like, you know, go off in a car in a ditch or, or sh you know, shoot herself. She took pills and, and, it, and it didn't kill her. Didn't oh, kill her. Okay. No, 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 that was lung cancer. Oh. But <laughs> yeah, there was a kind of a good end to that story. But, um, but she was not going to shoot herself. And, and hurt the face or the way she looked, you know, she was going to like take the pills and, you know, like go off into the sunset. So that is something that's important too, is that if there is not a gun in the house for a certain amount of time, then, then they, you know, they're, they're, they're like lots and lots of statistics about it. So that group is starting. So there are, there are these pockets of, yes, there are groups that are helping us 
um, connect to one another, but there are also groups and, and they will bleed into, into our outreach. You know, they bleed into discipleship. Um, technically, Interfaith Alliance is under Jerry because they did a lot of classes with you guys, you know? Like, that's, that's a 10 year, that's a five year, 10 year, 20 year history. Right. And there wasn't, a, there wasn't a pastor of group life before. Right. So, and which silo do you put it yeah, under? Right. Yeah. So, what the church has been really good about, I really appreciate this church being big enough to do the history yeah. that Jim's talking about bring it forward, connect with members that have been members forever. And then they continue to try to pare down. Yeah. I mean, that's a, that's a historical thing that we've been here. It's for, hard. We want to do it all. Yeah. yeah. We've you, got, every time we pare it down and that's a mission statement at St. Andrews, there are so Jenny, many gifted people. <coughs> that get a church. Yes. We've got about 12 minutes okay. left, and I know there's other folks who okay. want to ask questions in here and on Zoom, too. So if you don't mind, let's open it up and uh, somebody ask, you got a question, ask uh, Lauren, and share also what groups you are in here and what you've got out of Would you? Go ahead. Zoomers, too. What about the dinner for age or groups that used to be? Yeah, so that was one of the many things I looked at. There were better together groups and stronger together groups, or there were the whatever they were deeper together. And then there was there were all these different things that have happened in the history of of the church. That was one of them. And um, we really couldn't do it when I first started because it was COVID. Um, so we couldn't bring those back. But that's something we could bring back again. Absolutely. Well, one thing we like too is even selling with Saturday nights and you know, dinner too, because that was a great time to meet with people and fellowship too. <clears throat> yeah, I led a dinner church for four years and I love it's my favorite. It's my favorite. Yeah. Um, it seems to me like it seems to me like with a church this size that we have so many people that have so many diverse diversified interests and things that that as a church, the church should have few um, big interests that everybody can get involved in. But because there are so many of us, there are going to be a lot of different little groups underneath it. But when the big church has a lot of things to do, then those interests don't get as much of our help. So it seems to me like at the top, it should be several, few. And then as it comes down, then there can be these smaller groups that have these interests. But I, I think sometimes when the whole of the church gets involved in too many things, hmm. you don't give it as much attention and it doesn't get as much. So does that make sense? It does. And, and that's why <clears throat> these have become groups like the social right. justice group or the green group. It, it isn't. The group, actually that that one may become more a bigger a bigger focus for the church but these like the gun sense one is a is is under groups because it's something that some of the congregation it may be three to twelve people that this is this is how they connect with one another and we believe in that cause and so we're giving them the space the zoom link or the classroom um, or the advertisement to say, this is one of our groups if you're interested in this, but it's not, you know, under how do we eradicate isolation and social disconnection? It's by these things. And how do we connect with God and with each other? There are these things. It's, it's not on that. It's not on our banner or our, you know, we're not preaching about it on a regular basis, but it's important as a if that's how people want to connect, then so so we are, it's not, it truly is under group life. So it, it has a smaller billing. Yeah. Yeah. And then if, if there are only three people, you know, if people want to get three people want to get together in needlepoint, okay, make it a, a small group. And we will say that that's what you're doing. We're not gonna, you know, we advertise things like oh, yeah. sages because there are over a hundred people that attend that, you know, so there, there are the different levels of, but you're absolutely right. We're not making everything a big. Yeah, you can get yeah. top heavy that way. Yeah. And nothing gets, nothing gets a, a good part of you. Yeah. 
that we know the truth. Yeah. And I think that's with, with uh, when you look at our outreach, there are like five or six, I should look at the number, but there are like five or six things that are right now we're really focusing on. Yeah, yes. So if somebody wanted to start a group, uh, who do they go to? And, and does it need to be blessed by the church? Or? <laughs> yes, yes, they, yes, I need to bless it. So, hey. yeah, exactly. Yeah. I went to Catholic oh. school. I can say the Hail Mary in that. Um, uh, yeah. the incense too. We need to have the incense. Right. I know Cherry loves the incense. Like, <laughs> of course, he would love the incense. You know. I know you're recording the shoot. <laughs> Um, so you can start groups that aren't a part of the church wherever you are. If you want it to be a group in the church and you want it advertised where people, oh, we started a stepmom group. Yes. That's another group. We have a group for stepmoms, a, a, a lady who's wanted to start it, who kind of worked through some difficult times as a stepmom. And she's, she, the next step is marriages and babies and all that as a stepmom, but, but, um, but she is starting that group. So there are things like that. If you wanted to start it, you could you contact me. Connect at gosaintandrew.com comes to me and a few other people. Um, but, or you can come straight to me and say, I'd like to start this group. And I say, great, let's start it. So, yeah. Do you do some need uh, analysis? So, you know, you know, I mean, do you work with you to see about the need? To see if there is a need, or is that, I mean, you know what I mean? So you're not having this group and there's two people. You know, it might not be bad. I'm right. not saying that, but you know, it's a tough thing. So it's, um, I don't want to start something that someone thinks is a good idea but isn't willing to chair it or start it, you know? So start it, willing to start it, you think? Yeah. To put the time if into they're it. like, yeah. I think right. we should have this kind of group. Like, yeah. I think we should have young people in a small group, but I'm not willing to help with it. You know, or I think we should, yeah, really. you know, devote more time to this or that. I appreciate the good sentiments, but if you're not willing to get behind it, then, you know, then, uh, so, um, but it could be two to three people. Now we don't want to, you know, we really need to be mindful of, of, the space in this building. And if there are two people in that, you know, I love to needle point. If someone, if two people are needle pointing in this room that, that has <laughs> two classrooms with the owl, with all of this, that's not a good use of, of space or time or for the building. And so that, that then becomes the need analysis is space wise more than anything. So where do we find a list of all these? <laughs> Well, that's not all of them. These are the what? Okay, so the on the website and here are are ones that are open currently, but we have a few new ones that have just started. So three new ones have just started, and a women's. Oh, I took it off. There was a women's group. Oh no, it's not on this. It is on still. It's at six thirty on Wednesday. There's a women's group on here that no longer meets. So I need to take one off, and then I need to add. Um, you know, a few of these new ones that have started, but they have been intentional if I've been a part of it. Otherwise, if someone comes to me and says, hey, I want to start this, I'm like, great, cool. Let me know how I can, can help you. Yeah. We're almost out so, of time, but Diana, please go ahead. So quick question. So we're talking about, yes, space availability for groups. Is it a requirement that an official group as part of the church needs to meet in the church? Right. Absolutely it, not. Like, can you yeah. get in a home? Yes. And that's really preferable, actually. It, I mean, it's how we connect so much deeper with people when we are in each other's homes. So yes, it does not need to be here at all. Yeah. Yeah. Could I share one little thing, too, here? I gave a handout uh, here in the class, John Wesley's uh, disciples, 22 questions that Wesley asked 200 years ago when he was meeting at his holy club. Uh, and this, these are questions that they would ask each other each day. But at the bottom of this is Wesley's band meeting questions. And this is like the men's covenant group that they met with weekly. And he would ask, uh, what known sins have you committed since our last meeting? <laughs> what temptations have you met with? How were you delivered? 
So it was a different kind of thing than our most of our small groups today. Uh, much more, uh, you might call it accountable, accountability group. So I wanted to ask Lauren, what do you think of that kind of thing today? We have men's, uh, Steve and I are in a uh, men's covenant group together in John, and we have about eight men's covenant groups yeah. that run here too. Uh, that meet here at St. Andrew. And are there women's groups that do the same kind of thing? Yes. We have yeah. a covenant, yes, of confidentiality. We share and support. What do you think about those today? Is this a good idea? Oh, I just think they're they're crucial. Um, if you want to grow, you know, it's important to, to, to be able to evaluate how you're doing things in your life and how to, to make them better, you know, how to, how to, how to become more like Jesus, how to become more loving and kind, more forgiving, all of those things. Um, and, um, and so we need each other to hold each other accountable. Now, I was at my son's basketball game a few weeks ago, and the lady said, why do you always wear dresses? And I said, because I'm too fat for my pants. <laughs> <laughs> well, she has. She deserved it. Be, be, I seriously have gained 25 pounds since COVID started. Now my mother died in the middle of that, and then I was home, and I love to bake and all that stuff. But I didn't say, "Hold me accountable to it." What she then said anyway was, "Well, you need to blah 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 blah." I'm like, I didn't ask for that. I would not drink my diet coke and eat the wonderful things that Pete brings me each Sunday morning if I wanted to do something about it. So. Yeah. She's not in the covenant group. She is not in the covenant group. She's a parent of another kid, you know. So it is so crucial. You know, in the Bible, it says don't judge each other, you know, but then in another place, it says it. So don't judge someone you don't know or that has asked you, you know, that you don't have a relationship with. But if you're in a covenant relationship and you're like, hold me accountable to this, Diane. This is Satan, and please take it away. And if you see it in my hands, I want you to take it out of my hands. You're willing to do that. And I want you to, you know, text me once a day and say, how's your diet coke going? How do you have any water? You know, um, you can then evaluate and judge me on that and say, you know what? I see that you keep doing this, even though you said you weren't, and I'm worried about you, or I'm, you know, praying for you. So that's where that judgment piece comes in that's appropriate. It's not, oh, he's not his third wife. She looks really young. Or that sort of thing. You know, that's gossipy. That's the, you know, thing in your eye. That's, you know, that's not what, you know, but the judgment of the people you're really connected with that are, you know, in a different way. Where has there been temptation? Oh my gosh, I don't walk into the speaking of food, I don't, I don't walk into the um, coffee room here because there's always sweets in there, you know, and like, I would get my steps in, but then I would eat something, so I'm not going to do that, you know, so where are the temptations, where did you, what helped you, what helped you get over that, what helped you, you know, and how that could be supportive for other people, so I think it's absolutely crucial, I think that John Wesley was, um, militant about a lot of things and we're not quite so much there anymore which i appreciate <laughs> there's yeah. a lot more grace yes we're not doing it quite like he did yeah. but we do have yeah men's and women's groups if you're not in one and you're interested uh let us know and come see what they're like and it's not invasive um we're not asking you what sins you've committed this week, <laughs> uh, but they are very helpful. Okay, we do need to wrap up, but Jenny, go so ahead. So the, the one thing that I heard, I've heard for the whole time I've been here from lots of the earlier members was that the men's ministry has a very formal, I'm not going to say formal, but it's a little formal process of starting new men's covenant groups. Mm -hmm. Steve has been in three or four in the time that we've been here. The women's history has been more under UMW, if I understand. Mm -hmm. So they have not started formal covenant groups in the same way. So speaking for a person who was new in 2013, mm -hmm. if I were ever to try to find a woman's covenant group, mm -hmm. I'd be just like Joy. I would say, where do I look? Who do I, do I go online? Do I talk to people in Sunday school? Do I stand around the atrium and ask? So I think 
that joy is actually bringing up with you a very crucial next emphasis on if we're not really emphasizing the RW in the way that maybe it's been forever, right? how do we say to someone new at the church who doesn't know anybody yet, here's the Here's the way you find out if we're starting new women's covenant groups. What are they? Mm -hmm. Who might be starting one? Can you start one? What's the process? Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's just a that, that is really helpful. Yeah. And and what's happening is is that as new people have come in in the last really six months since we've been back for eight months, I do have those conversations with them and get them into these aren't as formal as the men's, yeah. but we do have groups that that women can join um, and um, and really get connected. I think a, a place where um, I was talking with, um, I don't think Helen, it was with you, I think it was with, um, with Allison, about Cafe Connect maybe needing to be not just for brand new people, yeah. but I've been here for years. Yeah. I want to talk to somebody and not just go onto the website and look for myself and try to find something, which sometimes it's really good and sometimes it's hard. Um, I think the website's a lot better and more user friendly, but still, if you don't know what you don't know mm -hmm. and to be able to go up to Cafe Connect and you know maybe you go to the side where the backs aren't and say, I've been here five years, I've been here 10 years, um, but I have a question. And knowing that you can go there and they're really knowledgeable about the cutting edge new things we're doing and can tell you, yeah, there are all these women's groups that are happening. And even though technically the, the noon book club group is a book club group, it's a covenant group. I mean, you all share with each other, right, Esther? I mean, it's a deep connection, Yeah, it is. you know, so, so they are different than the men's, but, but new people are getting that information from me. And we tried, I had Jim, Jim holds his bike. Oh my gosh, speaking of, people keep saying, oh, did you ride the bike? Where am I, do I look like I, I drove a road from Aurora on my bike? His bike is in Pearl. It is. But, you know, when we first kind of launched this this fall, and we had, his bike was there connected, and it talked about the cycling group. You know, they're, they're, so we tried to get it out to, to people who've been here for years to tell you, but that's really good information. And we need to be more strategic about that, about, about saying, go to Cafe Connect because right. they also can right. help you. Right, right. Yes. The women's group that we haven't talked about is sisters. Yes. And I actually was invited to sisters the first time I visited this church and came to sisters for almost a year before I joined the church. <laughs> It's a very, and it's grown so that it's kind of too big right yeah, now, yeah. really, to be, but it's still a very safe place. And if I meet someone new in the church, I always, a woman, I always invite them to sisters because it, it's a pretty safe place for them mm -hmm. to find out a lot. About it's them. such an amazing group. And it's it on here. It just doesn't say. What it says is large, it says Wednesday morning and then it says large group versus the other group that, that Carol Tyson leads that is a smaller group of women right. at the same time on Wednesday. But women are certainly here. Well, I, I go to the smaller group on Wednesday morning. Right. And women we, we we've gotten two new women. Yeah. Just recently. Yep. You know. Yeah, but keep part, send, well, sending folks your your way. So there so. are groups that it, just yeah. not always talked to the mm -hmm. time. Right. Well, and it's like it's on it. here, and it's double billed mm -hmm. because a lot of those groups are under discipleship. But I also have said, but they're also a small group, and so they can be both. You know. Mm -hmm. Well, what's the thought? If I can quickly ask, what's the thought now with not putting names? It, it's all going to uh, an email here at the church. Good question. Yeah. As well as in the bulletin. Yeah, it, no it's to streamline things and make it kind of more corporate. And, mm -hmm. you know, it goes to connect or it goes to care. It goes to, and we get them um, and we, you know, send them along to, you know. It, That's a pile up of 600,000 emails for each of you who are yeah. trying to lead it particularly. We have to wrap up everybody. Yeah. I'm sorry. I wish we could keep going. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> keep the, have a, I well, I keep just add on to that. I think I think some work, and I'd be willing to sit down and help figure it out. But 
some work needs to be done on the website yeah. Yeah. to make it more easy to yeah. more easier mm -hmm. to find yes. all these groups. Like mm -hmm. here's the groups and that listen and it lists names and emails yeah. to say if you're interested, contact such and such. Yeah, um, it all comes to connect and then I send it out to you yeah. all. Well, the skiing group is nowhere to be found. No. Right. It, yeah, I, you know what? It's on here. <laughs> <laughs> it is on here. Sorry. It's good luck, Steve. I'm wrapping up the pieces. <laughs> I wish we had another hour. Yeah. <laughs> Use it, but thank you so much, Lauren. Contact for being with me. Us Let's go to lunch or coffee. Coffee. And uh, <laughs> chat. Okay. thanks for having me. Thanks, thank Lauren. you. And my wife's not going to let us get away without a prayer. So, Ricky, would you like to do a prayer? Thank you. Lord, thank you for this day. And thank you for each person here. I thank you that um, we. Are such a diverse group and we have so many good ideas and thoughts and that they all come from you and i just ask that you'll be with each one of us go with us this week um help us to be jesus to our world in jesus name amen, amen. amen. thanks everybody thank you Lord. you're welcome Bye. I'm <laughs> <laughs>